Hello, folks. Uh, you are watching and listening to Sipping Off the Cuff on Tequila Aficionado Media, all of our channels and networks. I'm Mike Morales here in soggy Southern California. That gentleman out there is Matt Metris in wintry Rochester, New York. Uh, so how's the snow out there where you are? It's honestly not bad. We have like an inch on the ground right now, and it's supposed to be in the 40s this week. Well, our neighbors you... in Buffalo got slammed over and over again. We've only Oh, had... yeah. Buffalo. Well, uh, here in northern central California, you know, Mammoth, the Sierras are getting all the snow, which is fine. Uh, but we're getting soggy. I mean, we, we're it's we only have, you know, our seasons are fire, flood, uh, uh, landslide and earthquake. So those yeah. are those are our seasons here in Southern California. We have um, winter and construction. Oh, winter and construction, yeah, because because after that, after once winter hits, no construction happens. Oh my God, um, I'm excited, man. I have mm -hmm. been I have been jonesing for these mescals for so long, and I think you and I have had some really good mescals in, in 2022. We had one uh, that had the same kind of style label mm -hmm. i think it's agave paper yeah and, and this one is my uh uh mezcal melate is the name of the of the company um this is like a mail order mm -hmm. uh mezcal club i think yeah they come in it, little tiny bottles yeah yeah you get there was such a big variety of of mezcals that we're we're gonna get try to get through um, and the, the samples are generous. They're like 100 milliliters. So that's mm -hmm. generally enough to, to do some samples and, um, you know, and then do a decent review and still have some left over. Uh, but this one, we're going to attack the Mexicano, which, first of all, I love their packaging, Matt. I don't know about you, but. Yeah, no, this is super nice. It's got that nice tinted glass to it, too. You can see some of like the intentional imperfections of the glass. Probably yeah, the, the hand blown, the, yeah. the hand blown, the hand, it's got bubbles in it and it's got uh, the uh, agaves on uh, on the bottom as well and on, on the side. Um, oh, it's made as, from recycled glass too. Yes. Uh, as with as with most of these uh, ancestral uh, uh, mezcals that we've been getting, um, all the information is right on the label that, you know, everything you need is on, on that label. My understanding is uh, uh, that Mexicano translates, uh, the plant itself translates uh, or, or is what we consider rhodocantha, mm -hmm. which if I'm not mistaken, you can also make ricea from. Uh, right. they're called, so, we'll drink any agave, let's be honest. Yeah, I, you know, <laughs> Matt and I have had a, a wide variety of plants. <laughs> so... Um, but anyway, this is a three seven. I think it's a three seven five. Um, yeah, I think it is. Wh what number did you get? I got bottle number one of eight hundred and forty four. Wow. Where? Oh, bottle. Well, mine says one dash four two six. So maybe okay, one so, lot so number. So one must be the lot number, and then yeah. you got four two six. Okay, that's how you read it. I got bottle eight forty four. I don't know how many, how many bottles were in this lot. It looks uh, like the, they made 225 liters, so we could do the math if you want to do the math. Well, I, I, <laughs> yeah, no. I, how about how about this? How about we just drink the juice and find out how like good it, it is? Okay, like it. Um, we just broke the seal off of this, you know, on uh, right before we came online, and um, I am going to pour mine in a Stasso Jarrito for mezcal. Now, again, you know, the bottle, like Matt said, it's it's recycled glass, so it's going to look a little bit different in your glass versus in your bottle. Sure. Um, I did see lots of nice bubbles. Yep, yep. Wow, what an aroma. Holy yeah, cow. I noticed that as soon as I took the cork out, the aroma yeah. was right in, right in the face. Holy, wow. holy moly. Oh, and lingering bubbles. Yep. Uh, yeah, lingering bubbles. I don't know if you can see that in my glass, but some nice oh, yeah. nice legs nice legs i've i've moved my lights around somewhat for 2023 here so now you see them on the side of the glass instead of oh, the <laughs> you know I, matt has four screens I, do. I don't know how much how much light uh, i think you have enough light to light up rochester yeah. uh you're my sweatshirt it gets warm in here yeah I do, uh, well I, I have a halogen that, that creates that kind of heat so I, and i don't have it on right now but um 
This is beautiful to look at. Holy cow. Mm -hmm. It's got a nice sheen to it. Yes. Yeah, it's it's uh, this is uh, uh, ancestrally made. It will read you all the information on the back of the label if you couldn't read it off of Matt's camera. Mm -hmm. um, that's some thick legs and tears, man. Look at that. Mm, blood, so clingy. Wow. So there was a lot of agave. There was a lot of plant mm -hmm. coming from here. Coming. I can smell. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Holy, yeah, holy cow. Amazing. It doesn't take a whole lot. Nope. And I, I gave myself a healthy pour too. Cause you yeah, know, I, uh, yeah, I you, normally with these glasses, you don't need a, a, a lot, but you know, it's cold where Matt is. So, you yeah, know, got to warm myself up. This is lovely. Oh, mm -hmm. it's, it's floral and plant-like. Now I will say that when I've had rhodacantha from in a ricea, uh, balam ricea is one that Alex and I had because lo Alex loves riceas. It was, it was a, a much deeper aroma, like a very dense, you know, these ancestrals are, are, they're fermented in pine vats with the fibers. Yeah. And so you get a lot of fiber, a lot of, a lot of fibrousness uh, on those riceas. This one, this one's brighter though. Yeah. The floral is, is not uh, overwhelming. It's kind of muted and the, and the plant is really just front and center for me. Yeah. Me too. I mean, you, as soon as I uh, uncorked it, in fact, I was putting the cork back in and it's almost like it, it, it hit uh -huh. me right in the face. And, and at 45%, uh, not, not getting a ton of ethanol up the middle either. No, no. Uh, uh, you and I did the whole line of, of uh, Brujo Mezcal mm -hmm. and that all comes in at 45, 46. Uh, and that was, that's generally a good, I think it's probably ideal for mescals, anything at 45 and higher, maybe. Uh, I I am aware that there are some mescals coming on the market. They're coming online this year at almost still strength. Wow. Yeah. I'd still try it. I you may be the guy. <laughs> you may be the guy. I, I we have we have the inside track, and I, I understand that it's either coming online first or second quarter of this year. So anyway, but I won't go into that because. I, I want it. I am really enjoying the nose on this one. Yeah, me too. It's, it's, I'm getting more floral now. I don't know if it's opened up for you at all, but. Yeah, a little bit, a little bit. But otherwise, it's not overly complex on the nose. It just is no. telling you what it is. And, and here it is. And uh, yeah. just, a, just enough alcohol to make it interesting. Otherwise, no smoke either. I'm not getting yeah, any, no, any no. of that. You want to dive in? I'll play. That. Yes, please. Yes, please. Okay, here we go. <laughs> hmm. Mm. Mm. Oh, yeah. Mm. Well, that was really unexpected. I love that. That was, it had so much, I want to use the word tanginess. Like it had some citrus punch, some plant, some yes, pepper. Yes. It's like this whole melody in your mouth. Yeah, there was so much going on that, that it like caught me off guard because the aroma was like, oh, it's going to be straightforward, just agave. Yeah, 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 yeah. You, you're expecting one thing and it, all of it happens in the intake. Mm -hmm. In fact, now that I, I've only had one pass, my palate is already coated and that's coming from the smoke. The smoke does that. If it, the, it's smoked properly, the smoke is what actually coats your palate as whereas in tequila, if you get something that coats your palate like that, it's usually glycerin, you know, but in this case, this is, this is exactly what the smoke is, is supposed to do. Yeah. Oh, wow, man. And it's it's got a lot brighter on the intake though. It, it doesn't give you the nose belies what the, what the intake is, what the flavor yeah, is. That that second pass had some heat to it too. It it's percolated on the end of my tongue, and I'm like, wow! So that's it. Almost had like a chili pepper aspect mm. to it, like not a flavor of a chili pepper, but mm. that that residual Scoville unit, or you know, mm. I need a need a piece of bread and some milk before we do another tasting. <laughs> well, what I will say is, this is a full body. It's bold, but what a great finish too. Mm -hmm. It's got a medium to long finish. Yeah. 
this is this is a <clears throat> I want to do some retronasal because I'm getting more um let me let me read the back of this thing I'm going to have to reuse my readers folks because as with most of these ancestral mescals everything you need to know is on the back yeah in, um in four point font yeah all right yeah uh it's Taona and uh four to five days in an earthen oven oh there you go you're now we can see it okay uh if you folks have your phone handy you might want to freeze the the, the the review and snap that that qr code it'll take you to reviews and videos as well which is kind of nice to have because remember matt we had that with the with the crm and they messed it all up yeah it worked great for a while until it stopped working great <laughs> and then well you know work. until the crm stopped working too you know yeah. now they call themselves something else I, I have no idea what what's going on with those guys um this is the the agave is six to seven years the region is san baltisar chichicapa or chichicapam i'm sorry uh okay now this is distilled in copper so i'm wondering would you uh, i know ancestral is is only in um no metal touches the the juice this being copper this would be considered um uh, um uh, uh artisanal so i'm not sure that they're under the jurisdiction of any nom because there's not one on the bottle and it's labeled as an agave spirit yeah, I have a feeling that that's what these these that's what these are, and I and I think that that's what mezcal melate or my gay melate I think is what they're yeah. actually called, is what they're known for is that they're being what we call destilados, so they don't fall under the norma, but they have, you know, the all of these uh, makers, all of these mezcaleros, or you know, I don't even know what you're going to call them, palenqueros, I guess. Um, they're they're being featured on their own juice that's that that's yeah. the signature you know matt uh show his picture i think oh yeah these we got these trading cards this came yeah they got trading cards yeah that's uh, cool and it's got a what does it have the story in the back or yeah it's got uh, a little bit about the the mezcal a little bit about um maybe his family i'm not sure i think i think she uh uh Estela Hernandez Ramirez is the uh, mezcal. She's the mezcal making family. Uh, Fortunato's fa uh, central figure, but in Fortunato's family, his daughter Estela plays a rather significant role as the head of sales and ad admin. Huh, no kidding. There you go. That's cool. She you read the whole card, in. and then you know what it's about. But <laughs> yeah, yeah. I my cards are in the living room. Uh, I didn't bring them with me, but I'm glad. I'm glad that Matt has his because. Really, folks, you should pause the video and read, you know, don't let me read it to you. But, you know, and then the QR code is also available on the on the trading card as well. Yeah. And I he's a maestro. And they even tell you how long he's been a maestro mezcalero or mm -hmm. a maestro palenquero. Um, Since 1990. Third generation. Third generation. So they and that's the reason that we I've been jonesing for these mm -hmm. for so long because they, you know, um, there there are several importers who are who are uh, sourcing these from people who have been making them, um, you know, uh, generationally, but they don't fall under the norm. They don't pay the the CRM or Comer Cam or whoever they happen to be to get the the, the NOM on it, and they're but they're just as valid. And like I said, these are these are I I understand that this. My gay melate is a, 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 a being sourced by one gentleman who I hope to have on an open bar uh, one of these days uh, within 2023, probably first quarter somewhere. And he's the one in charge of sourcing these um, these dis distillates. And um, that's a whole other category for us, Matt. Yeah. It doesn't like you said, it doesn't fall. It's in the same region, yeah. right? As as we've chichicapa was is famous uh i think del maguey was one of the first ones to actually bring that region into the the public uh the public awareness and and now they're continuing with with stuff like this and yeah i'm, I'm in love man i this wow it, and it's kind of a combination of uh ancestral and and artisanal but not not necessarily under the norm under the yeah, norm i like it i like it 
I mean, like it better. You know, by those production rules. Well, yeah, you know, these guys, all these guys, at one time or another, their families were persecuted. You know, they they're up in the hills. I mean, yeah. the prohibition not didn't only happen in Oaxaca. It happened in Sonora. It happened in you know for Bacanora. It happened for uh, Sotol as well. You know, all these guys had to head up into the hills. And they had to, you know, they did it clandestinely. Uh, I mean, there's even a Sotol have been trying to get clandestino, been trying to get that Sotol for years, you know, because it's got a great name because that's exactly how yeah. these, these people have generationally survived. And um, they were doing it long before the Norma was in place. So, you know, who's <laughs> who's to say what's more authentic, right? You know? Yeah, right. What came first, the chicken or the Norm? I, I, <laughs> I don't know, you know? Uh, mm. 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 Mm -hmm. as it opens up it gets brighter you get mm -hmm. more of the of and i don't even want to call them citrus notes but they're sweeter notes mm -hmm. it's like a sweet like a plantain like a like those cooking bananas that you see in southern california they're all over the place we get them all the time um sometimes uh depending on if you're of cuban descent you get uh you 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 wait till they ripen and then you fry them and they're called, you know, maluros. We have that in Central America as well. And, and or, you know, sometimes you get those banana chips and you get plantain chips, which are a little bit more, um, uh, less sweet. Um, and that's, I get that on. Yeah, I can see that. I'm getting, you know, that, but, it, but it's more sweeter. It's more like a maduro than a platano or mm -hmm. a plantain, sorry. Uh, or you'll see it at the stores, you know, it's called a cooking banana. Uh, sometimes i've seen that before i don't think we have those in this my store here uh yeah it, you know you should try it it'd be a great side it'd be a great side uh, for the for the you and i gotta do a thing at at, at um at your brother's bar at your, yeah. at your bar all you gotta do is come to new york i i've been through that area <laughs> i've been i've actually driven past rochester into the finger lakes area as one does <laughs> yeah as one does uh and and but now i have a reason to stop yeah that's true <laughs> so, bring it uh because now let me ask you this does rochester have any wineries i would imagine that they do well i mean we have a, our our brewery scene is really big you know okay the okay so um, craft beer is a big thing for you guys yeah our our wineries are more finger lakes located right i mean it's hard to say where the delineation mark is between the rochester area and the finger lakes area so you could say yes but most of them you got to drive about an hour or so yeah, the Finger Lakes uh, area is still about an hour from from Rochester, yeah. at least an hour and a half, maybe. Yeah, it depends where you're going. Yeah, I mean those lakes are long, right? So if you go to the north end, it's only an uh, hour. I, I uh, um, in my other life, I, I had a, uh, uh, I knew someone that that was a tenured professor in, at Syracuse University. So um, they they lived in that area, and and um, I had my first taste of. Of, of wine from the Finger Lakes area. And I was so impressed. They do stuff, they, they're barreling. The stuff they do with their barrels is amazing up there. So uh, in fact, at that time, my dad was still alive. And I think we we bought a couple of bottles and had it shipped to, to California to for my dad. He's a big wine guy. So yeah. um, anyway, uh, I think you would agree with me, Matt, that it's a random promise nominee. No, they still don't have a sign, but... I, I will get I will get those to you. I'm gonna I'm gonna I get a series of the TJs that we had that we met together in San Diego. They got they got these. Yeah, I have I some for you. Diego. I gotta get one to I got my guy in LA, Skip. He doesn't have one. I go, you're right here in LA. I gotta get you one. Yeah. So I'm gonna I'm gonna get this. That glue not in, not included. Popsicle stick not popsicle included. Popsicle stick. I have a I have a popsicle stick too, uh, but glue not included. Um, but yeah, I'm going to get, make sure that, that Matt gets one, uh, cause last year you had your, your makeshift one. Yeah. I've had a couple <laughs> makeshift ones that I've, I've subsequently lost. Uh, I, anything else you want to say about this? I love the retro nasal on this as well. Um, really you want to spend time with it. Don't make a cocktail out of this thing. Don't do it. Um, I'm, yeah, I'm excited about I'm, I, you know, everything about this is amazing. I was just seeing if we had any pricing information. I don't know. Yeah, I was going to say that. Uh, uh, I know that. Let me read a little bit about the plant itself. Rhodocantha. And I know that this is um, 
that ricea can be made with rhodocantha as well. There are like three or four different plants that ricea can be made except for blue agave. Uh, because ricea, their denomination of origin is, is in Jalisco. Uh, but they, they just got theirs in like 2019. I mean, it's a really young, um, uh, it's a very young denomination of origin. Uh, Maguey Mexicano Penca Larga, Penca Corta, uh, uh, Mexicano Liso, which would be smooth, uh, uh, Chontal, and uh, Amarillo Grande. These are all the rhodocanthas that, that the sub varieties that, uh, that they can make uh, that Mexicano falls under. Um, we're not getting anything precise as far as which of these. Um, but you know what? I, I, it, it's uh, Taona. Uh, uh, it's Taona. The vat is white cedar wood. Uh, fermentation takes about four days. It is well water, uh, copper, and uh, the liters produced 225 back in March 2021. So again, folks, if you saw that QR code, you might want to snap that uh, on your phone and and check out any more of what they're um what what uh more about this particular um uh maestro i, I don't even know what to call these guys you know maestro yeah. Palenquero, uh but they're they're just as maestros as anybody else they did they're just not you know they're still they're still the outlaws um but anyway that's our take on my game melate uh, thank you again, folks, for making this happen. I'm I'm really really impressed with. It. No wonder it's a it's a mail order type of thing. You can look them up. I I know that they're everywhere. Uh, and are finally they finally uh, have have sent us samples. I, I so appreciate those folks for making this happen because we really we love this stuff. This is, and and you know what? Their branding's not bad either. I, yeah, I, absolutely. I'm all about the the fiber notes and all the, you know, all the transparency that you don't see in tequila that you see in other agave spirits, but you don't see them in tequila. And, and you know what, that's okay. Uh, I'm good with that. 45 ABV. Now, if you've had it, leave us a comment. If you're watching us on, on uh, YouTube, please uh, let us know. We're going to get better at, at getting back to your comments in a more timely manner. Uh, please subscribe, hit the notification bell so you can Get uh, notified every time uh, any of our videos go up. Give us a like because that helps the algorithm, this, this video, get out to more tequila aficionados out there and mezcal aficionados and destilado aficionados. Uh, and uh, anyway, I'm Mike Morales here in Southern California. That guy out there is Matt Metris in Rochester, New York. You have been watching and listening to Sipping Off the Cuff on Tequila Aficionado Media on all of our channels and networks. Don't forget to follow us on Instagram and whatever you do, tomar sabiamente. Sip wisely. Thanks for tuning in. Please be sure to visit our website at tequilaaficionado.com to get your free subscription to our magazine, download past issues, check out our branded merchandise, or get yourself equipped with the best tequila glassware for your sipping style. As always, sip wisely.